on it. <laughs> Hi guys, it's Jenny Belly. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have an art journaling video for you guys. And um, for you guys that are going art journaling, but Jenny Belly, where's the junk journal tutorial you promised us? <laughs> I'm working on it, but um, I have some corrupted footage which is making issues for me. <laughs> so other than short of redoing it all again, which is a lot of work, I'm looking to what I can do. But I thought I would use it as a tool to share with you this process because what happens when I get an issue in a project is it often stops me in a lot of projects um, it's an aspect of my creative shadow which I've known is a pattern for many many years and I think it's important to be aware of your creative shadow which basically means um, the areas where your inner critic is strongest where it shows up for you um, and is quite hardcore and it stops you and it's important to bring awareness to those aspects because then when you do get stuck when you get paralyzed when you're in heavy resistance when you are dealing with any kind of um, creative blockage you then understand the roots of it a lot better and it will help you move through it doesn't stop it doesn't mean it goes away um, but it does mean that you can process things easier um, and just being aware of it in the first place means that you don't feel so frustrated and crazy about it it's just like this is that side again this is that aspect and um, I've got something to work with through here so this is me working through it and I thought I would share with you the process because stopping or having an issue with that one video stopped me making any video have you noticed you may have noticed I haven't like done a video since when I meant to do um, you know I've got so many video ideas and things but the one I was working on got a spanner in the works and then suddenly it's like oh um, that aspect is showing up for me again where I just paralyzed on all projects because the one um, has issues so what I would do is not only talk to you about this so that I can help you bring maybe your own awareness or you can look at your own shadow side of your creativity but I'm going to do an art journaling um, page around it as well because art journaling is a great way to process so it may help you figure out art journaling as a tool um, to help you connect, have a conversation with even your shadow side, but just to move that energy through. Creativity is a great tool for moving energy, and you've probably done this unconsciously. Um, whenever you've had a tough day at work and you come back home and you know you just blur it all out in an art journaling page, or you do it with your knitting in front of the television or you do it with your doodling or whatever it is you do um, if you've done that to kind of calm and center yourself um, that's basically you using your creativity to shift the energy and I think we all intuitively instinctively do this anyone that's a creative person so I'm just sharing this so that hopefully you can bring some intention to it so when you and baby next get stuck on a project you can think oh yeah Jenny Belly did a page literally about something similar um, to what I'm going through right now I can intentionally go to my art journal and shift and move these energies that are holding me back in some way so this is why there isn't a junk journaling tutorial right now for you guys but I hope you enjoyed this video Something that has come up though since I did post the last video is you've been asking about um, the giveaway and I was going to do another giveaway in the junk journaling class so I'll do it here as well. So it, maybe until I end up doing posting the junk journaling class I'll just do a giveaway in every video. <laughs> so I'll do a giveaway for my remedies junk journaling class in this video as well but I'll also insert at the end um, a little bit that I did create for the junk journaling video that isn't corrupted that explains what the remedies class actually is because I got a lot of confusion <laughs> in the last uh, video as to what I was actually giving away so 
you will get um, a chance to enter this giveaway just by liking this video and leaving a comment letting me know you've done that because I'm going to go through the comments to pick the person that gets my junk journaling online workshop called Remedies. So that's fun and worth entering and so I'll get into making my art journaling page which I'm going to title Getting Back on Track because that is the intention behind doing this, just putting it all out there on the page and flowing and moving, moving <laughs> this stuff through so that I can get to my, back to my creativity, back to making videos for you guys, get to putting the creative uh, shadow, the inner critic back in its place, which doesn't necessarily mean eradicating it or you know putting it down or whatever it just means it's no longer in the driver's seat I am so I'm going to take control via this art journaling page so I decided I wanted to do a loose leaf page for this art journal page which basically means a sheet that isn't bound into a book and I chose a large sheet of paper which is about a3 in size and folded it in half so that um, I could create a page with a pocket. So to do that, you just glue the bottom and one of the sides, and then that leaves the top to be a pocket. If you want to see more loose leaf pages, I do have at least one art journal flip on YouTube of a, maybe, maybe I've got two. Yeah, I think I've got a couple of uh, loose leaf journal, art journal flips for you on the channel. So I'll link them somewhere in the cards and in the description below if you want to see them but I like working on loose leaf occasionally it just changes up the um, the medium that you're working in and I find it quite uh, freeing So this page I'm going to be showing all about layering effectively because I get many questions about that, about layering. Um, why are you doing that when you've just done this? Why do that just to have, cover it up and things like that? So I'm going to be answering those kind of questions in this video and just give you some tips on how to layer effectively because there are ways that you can do it where you don't cover it up completely, such as this writing that I'm doing now. I'm making it kind of a black background but I'm not going to take out all of the blue that I've already added um, even that little word that I used with those neo color twos the balance word is gonna be a little bit visible and writing is something I get asked about a lot as well so I'm gonna be covering a little bit of that in this video as well you'll see many layers where I journal because that is part of my process I am a written journaler but I can't go into the hows and the whys you journal in this video because that's like <laughs> ridiculously long the best thing I can give you for that is a pay what you want including free class um, called seven day journal journey which I did at the start of the pandemic to help people process their emotions where every day we take a different journaling approach and we go through that so if you want to know how you can incorporate more journaling into your art journaling then I would suggest taking that as I say it starts at free so there is no excuses for not taking it and it will answer many of the questions that I honestly get asked over and over and over again about what do you write? How do you write? Why do you write in your journaling? So I'll cover the writing in terms of layering in this video, but the hows and the what I'm writing about and all of that is better to do the seven day journal journey class. So the writing in this page is already very layered because I go over it this way and that way and that is because this journaling isn't for keeping, it isn't for memory, it isn't for storing ideas or memories or thoughts or anything like that. This page is about processing the creative shadow and that's what I was in the process of doing. So for journaling that is more for journaling, for storing, for keeping, that is what the seven day journaling class is for. This is for letting the thoughts and the emotions move through and not for dwelling on what I'm writing. Layering to me usually includes collage just because I really like it and because I was doing this create 
page in relation to my creativity. I like the idea of using another creative that I like. So I've got bags work here that I'm just going to tear apart and not cover the whole page with. So this is how you layer effectively, is never by covering the, pa the layer beneath on the page entirely. So you add a little bit of collage, not cover the whole thing in collage because then you eradicate what you've done before. So this is how you layer is by adding a little on top of a little on top of a little and placing it in areas where you find it most effective for whatever reason, because it looks nicer to your eye or because it covers a piece of art underneath it that you aren't particularly liking too much because it has too much of one colour or you know isn't particularly attractive or because it just works well there and then I'm choosing another colour in this pen where I'm doing a little bit more journaling and just a little bit of doodling so that that kind of pops against the background. So what also makes an effective layer is contrast but then I'm going to cover it in white titanium white acrylic so that I can bring everything back down to a more neutral place to build from but you're going to see I'm going to show you close up of how all of the layers underneath are still visible. Nothing's been completely removed, nothing's been completely covered. So I like tools for adding these layers such as brayers and credit cards and even fingers and sometimes brushes rather than just covering the whole thing with a thick layer of paint. You want a more translucent layer, a thinner layer. Uh, where peaks of the interest beneath always show through somewhere. It doesn't have to show through on the whole page. You don't want all the page looking the same. And this is again how you make it effective is by having different areas show different parts of the layering process rather than having all of it always showing the whole thing. Um, the edges on this page you'll notice show more of the blue and the middle we're going to do more collaging and we're going to add so many layers to this that it's going to look yummy and scrummy but there will be areas where I cover what is underneath with a new layer and areas where I leave the layers that are already there to show through um, another part of the page so that there's an intricacy to it that builds. Now I did this page over the length of a day, just coming to it in bits and pieces, spending a few minutes here and there on it, and I didn't always know what I was going to do next, but at some points it's more important just to keep moving than to be worried about what you're going to cover and what you're going to keep, otherwise that may paralyse you into not adding anything at all. So if you don't know what you want to do next, just pull out a pencil, just pull out some paint, just pull out anything and just get moving with it. The reason why I'm using a glue stick on this brown packaging paper that I just got from a parcel and wanted to use on this is because I wanted to keep the texture of the page. If I use um, gel matte medium as I did with adding the music paper then what happens is you kind of lose that crunchiness, it fuses the paper together so with the brown I wanted to keep that paper texture without adding um, a layer of glue on top and then I just chose a load of blue um, scraps, blue collage and ephemera and things I just found around in a couple of my collage bins and again you can see I'm covering the bottom half of the page, I'm not covering the whole page. Um, the top is going to stay pretty much as it is now so that you can see the layers that have gone before. Now I've got this new stencil pack and in them is this stencil um, waste, the inners of a stencil. So I'm going to use that to do a reverse stencil technique, again just using the white and covering up the collage that I've just done, but covering it up in a way where there's still parts visible. The, this leaf design is visible and also the parts where I did cover up with the white on the collage, I didn't make it so that it was an opaque covering, I kept it so that it was translucent and I did have some of the white left over so I'm just going to use some of the scraps that are left over as well and that um, white and just start another journal page in my regular journal um, just to use up those things because I don't like wasting paint. <laughs> if paint is wet I usually use it before it gets dry. Even though it's white 
Um, that's why I wanted to add some collage onto this second journal page is so that I could cover it as well because if I just did that on white paper it wouldn't be as effective as what it is as putting it on collage. <laughs> Now just going over with a fine liner to pull out the the leaf uh, branches and some of the layers don't have to be full or blocky they can be these little intricate touches that just pull out a detail or push back a detail um, depending on what you want to to do so sometimes you'll make a journal page where you'll just do a background and then put a focal on top and the on top of the focals will go all of the details when you're working more in a layering page then you can mix it all up although you want to follow that system a little bit because you wouldn't want to do this on your first layer <laughs> and then cover it up because there would be no point in that sense so you need to choose where your layers are going to be most effective while at the same time as I said earlier in the video you don't want to stress yourself out too much that you are worried you're gonna cover a layer so much that you don't add to it and the more you do this the more you will find your own way of figuring out what layers you like where it looks really nice when you journal and journal and journal in all different directions on top of each other I think it aesthetically is, is quite pleasing it's messy but as long as you use a little of it as I've shown you throughout this whole page you use a little of something it's really effective um, definitely when you're using it because you want layers you could journal across the whole of the page as I did at the very beginning but then you might want to cover it up because it's too full to um, distracting from anything else you want to add or then you can add it in these little ways via making a piece of collage out of it that has your signature on it to be honest I think handwriting there's a magic to handwriting your handwriting is unique I'm now working on adding a focal element I wouldn't have to put a focal into this page because there is so much already going on um, it's just my choice I could easily just put a couple of touches on this page and call it good <laughs> to be honest and sometimes I would do but for this day I decided to spend the whole day bits and pieces of it five minutes here ten minutes there on this page I'm gonna add textures to this page in the form of ribbon and um, staples and elements like that that are a little bit more tactile and come off the page and then I'm gonna add some really cool herbs <laughs> which are really tactile. So throughout all of these layers, I'm working with the creative shadow and it's really difficult to say what shadow work is, but with reference to this page, what I'm doing is just being aware of it to me. For any shadow work, that's the first step, is you have to be aware of it. You cannot transform or integrate or transmute anything that you are not aware of. So this whole day I spent really um, being in the presence with my creative shadow and sometimes that's what the shadow work is. That's all the shadow work is because people expect things to shift very rapidly and sometimes they can in life, but generally, mainly, our changes evolve. They develop day to day, not through a huge quantum shift, but through tiny micro changes, um, sometimes imperceptible. And really that's where the greatest change happens because it's the most lasting. It's the one that you kind of adapt to the most and um, keep 
And in my experience, it's just the way of things more, but we have this impatience. I do anyway, and I think I've seen it in a lot of other people, but I'm fully aware that my creative shadow will turn up in the ways that it's been turning up over and over and over again. And it's just through processes like this, awareness like this, that the change can happen. So I'm gonna add other texture in the form of <laughs> herbs, some bay leaves, and I'm just showing you me uh, upcycling a pot that my beauty blenders came in <laughs> to keep my bay leaves in. And I did a recent video for my newsletter subscribers that I also shared for free on journal workshops. So if you're on journal workshops, you can watch that half an hour story time with Jenny Belly video. I was explaining in that video how I'm really enjoying using more natural elements in my creativity recently, including herbs and including minerals and things like that. So you are going to see both of those end up on this page. And you're also going to see soon me creating an apothecary inspiration wall. I'm going to do a video where I share with you, because you guys know I like inspiration walls. If you've seen my studios, I like artwork on the walls for inspiration. But what I'm doing that's different in my um, outdoor studio that I'm renovating is I'm going to make an apothecary inspired functional inspiration wall. So I can't wait to share that with you. So if you come down to here, this thing here is just an old storage unit which gave me the inspiration to make an apothecary wall. I've just been playing around with this to make it look a little bit more apothecary-like and then I'm going to spray paint this. Now bay leaves traditionally you write on them what you want to create, what you want to manifest and then you burn them but I'm going to use them a little bit differently in this page. I'm going to do the first thing, I'm going to write on three bay leaves what I want, keeping one of them personal guys, <laughs> but I'm going to show you the other two and then I'm going to include them on this journal page because this journal page is about getting back on track, having balance, working with my creative shadow to work through the issues that I need to work through. So I am using this kind of tradition of using bay leaves to manifest in the journal page. I like the layers, but I also like layers of magic and layers of intention. And I'm just showing you a trick I do with my tacky glue, guys. You guys know I love tacky glue. I use it a lot. Ah! <laughs> Hello, but the big bottles are the most economical you know to buy but also they are the most difficult to use for me personally in my arting so what I do is I refill little starter or tester pots because they are the easiest to handle but they get used up fairly quickly for me so I would hate to always be buying them because I'll be feeling like I'm always throwing away plastic so I buy the bigger pots and I just constantly refill <laughs> the smaller but tacky glue is a brilliant element to stick down any um, of these more organic materials or um, heavier materials such as the stones I'm going to add it keeps them firmly stuck down onto your journal page so here's my gemstone drawer of all of my goodies that I craft with and I'm going to just include a couple of them on the journal page and again as I said I, I'm choosing them in accordance with their um, meaning and I know these are unusual things to include in your journal page but I hope you take them as inspiration to include whatever you want <laughs> in your journal page it doesn't have to be organic matter it can be anything um, but they all add layers and they all add texture and they all add interest. I'm using the word magic a lot in my life because I am, I'm finding everything magical, everything around me magical and I'm enjoying bringing all of them together in my creativity. One thing that I'm doing here is there's a little feather tucked behind this stamp on the page that just doesn't want to disappear so I'm going to include it. I was trying to brush it off of the page but it just didn't want to go so there's another little organic element <laughs> that wanted to be included. I've no idea where this little feather came from but it wanted to be included on the journal page so I stuck it into the, the space where it was originally showing itself. So I know, unusual layers. <laughs> unusual elements to add to your journal page but use whatever it's a way to make your journaling more unique more you more different so i hope you liked this journal page 
let me know in the comments below guys and the giveaway I will let you know about now. The giveaway is my remedies class which is a junk journal workshop and there was a little bit of confusion last week as to what it actually was so obviously I didn't spend enough time explaining. Um, it's an online class where we make a junk journal it's um, what we call an emotional directory and in it there are folios and it's a journal that you can add to and subtract from and it's what I refer to as a working journal means it's gonna always be in flux with you and what you require at that moment so the class consists of three sections one is all about making a lovely junk journal with you know my bindings and things like that I'm always coming up with how I want to bind journals and that tends to be what I put in my classrooms. Then the second section is all about the remedies so we get more into the emotional types. There's four emotional types. Um, we all are each at different points in our lives and I also have a lesson on the four realms in that class as well as the four types. So the four types are the four types of people that we are and the four realms are the four realms that we preside in. So I'll give you a quick run through of what they are. The first is the physical realm. It's me talking to you. It's this here. It's this chair. This chair. Have you seen this chair? <laughs> um, I'm all about the stuff that I'm adding to this room, guys. You wait to see when I've done it. I will definitely post a makeover video for you. Um, but it's the physical. It's what you touch. It's what you taste. It's all of that kind of stuff. And it's the way that we know mainly to work in and the second type is the mental realm which we trust a little bit more than the emotional realm which is the third type because it's easier to grasp you literally think your thoughts so you believe them whereas your emotions are a lot more like this and then the last realm is the spiritual physical is easiest because we operate in it every day mental is a little bit easier than the others that preside it but a little bit harder than the physical because mental realm <laughs> and then um, the emotions um, so it's a little bit of a tricky class that second section because I'm asking to go into the emotions so that you can pull out what it is that you need emotionally to put it into the different folios in your remedies journal and then in that section we then make the remedy folios which each one is different according to what you feel you need. So every single person's remedy phobia will be different because our remedies are going to be different. And then the third section is a bonus section that is all about um, an older class that I never put out, that I'll never give to any other, <laughs> any other uh, peeps or anything. It's just in there of a junk journal. I think it was called Junkie Journal Month that I, uh, started making years ago and I never ended up finishing it so I, I added it to this class as a freebie it doesn't matter where you're from you can enter and it is hosted on journal workshops so all you need to do to enter is to like comment um, letting me know that you've done that and subscribe to be honest you can subscribe if you want or not but like and comment letting me know that you've done that so I know that you're entered in the giveaway So that's it for this video my loves, I hope you got something out of it and if you want another video from me I'll be doing the monthly challenge video soon on journal workshops so come over there and join me if you want to see what I'm up to. Much love everybody, take care.